So I'm going to interrupt this part real quick to give you some information. First off, just in case you missed the title, this is part two. If you have not watched part one, I highly, highly, highly recommend you go and watch that now. Basically, it's the finer details in the structure of setting up for this painting. And if you've been painting for a while, you know that the basic drawing and the structure and even the setup is very important to get to that great painting at the end. So I highly recommend you check that out first if you have not. However, if you are here and you are ready to start painting, then guess what? It's time to start. I'm not sure exactly why, but painting in general always makes me feel like a kid again, without a care in the world. In today's video, I'm going to be breaking down this illustration into five parts. But before I get too far into this, I want to make sure that I lay down some ground rules for you guys. Ground rule number one. Mix on two plates. With this painting, I highly, can I say that again? I highly, highly recommend mixing your warmer colors on one plate, such as reds, oranges, and yellows, and even warmer browns, and your cooler colors on another plate, such as greens, blues, purples, and even cooler grays and browns. This will help you preserve your paint and give you enough room to mix larger portions of color. Ground rule number two. Mix a lot of paint. With this painting, we will be using pre-mixed colors and then adding traces of new colors for deeper depth and harmony. This illustration is more of an example how a true artist uses paint on their palette. Unlike the Rosy Bunny tutorial where you mixed new colors for every layer, with this illustration we will be using previous mixed colors and either adding warmer tones to it or cooler tones to them. Thus, some mixtures can be three to five colors mixed together, which can become really complicated if you run out of that color midway through the painting. All right. Now that we have our ground rules established, let's go ahead and jump into our first section. The first section that we are going to be tackling will be the pot's label. This has the most colors and details, so let's get this guy out of the way first. Number one, the red background. Using a large round brush, paint a bright orangey red in the center of your label as shown. Here's a tip for you. The larger brush that you can comfortably handle will actually help you get a crisper, smoother, flat wash for this section. Section number two, large peachy flowers and leaves. On your plate, add a bit of water to the side of your paint mixture and then proceed to paint the large flowers and little leaves as shown. Section number three, smaller orange leaves. Next, add a bit of orange to your mixture and then paint your smallest leaves in your label. Section number four, yellow leaves. 
After you have completed painting your smaller leaves, we are now going to add yellow to your plate. And then add a pinch of that peach mixture to your yellow. Once you have this goldeny yellow mixture, go ahead and paint that on your large yellow leaves. Section number five, navy border. By mixing two blues together, go ahead and create a navy color for the border of your label. I know this is a rule breaker. I am putting a cooler color on the warmer plate, but trust me, trust me, trust me. This will all make sense in just a moment. Section number six, gray background. Using the navy mixture that you just mixed, go ahead and add a little bit of orange and violet to your mixture until it turns this tan gray color. Then proceed to go ahead and paint your background. Section number seven, final details. We are almost done with the hardest part of this painting. Now to finish it up. With the peachy orange color mixture from earlier, paint your smaller leaves a bit darker. Add stripes to your larger yellow leaves. And finally, paint the cross-hatched section of your larger flower. Personally, I always like to get the hardest portions of my task done first so I can enjoy the rest of my time. I kind of make it a little bit like a game. You have officially hit the halfway point, even though it doesn't really look like it right now. So, Give yourself a pat on the back and let's jump into this final stretch. While your label section dries, go ahead and trade out plates for a clean plate, which we will use for our cooler colors. Next, we will be tackling the cactus itself. The first section that we are going to be tackling is the base color. With a yellow-green mixture, go ahead and paint the entire cactus except for a bit of white along the far right side of those rubbery cactus leaves. This will be your brightest highlight. Section number two, midtones. With the previous mixed base color, add another layer of green to your shadow regions it should appear a shade darker. Turquoise shadows. Now add a bit of turquoise to your base color and then drop that aqua green into your shadows, as shown. Section number four, deepening shadows. Now add a bit of blue to your aqua mixture. Then drop this color into your deepest shadows. Those will be the ones located on the far left and bottom of your cactus. Section number five, 
like to add interesting spins on familiar objects with color. Just to add a bit of quirkiness and oddity to my paintings. For this cactus, I decided to drop a bit of purple onto the cactus while it was still wet with green. There is really no rhyme or reason for where I drop the color than simply to watch the turquoise and the green merge together in a mesmerizing manner. This is one of the reasons why I absolutely love watercolor. When you find two opposite colors, such as a cool and a warm, that work well together, it's always fun to let the paint just do its thing and merge together like a tie-dye. Potter's Glass If you haven't already guessed, next we will be moving on to the Charming Pot base color. Believe it or not, if you still have that yellow-green mixture from your cactus base coat, we will be using that color again, just watering it down and adding a touch of yellow to the mixture. Once you have watered down this color, it should look something like a yellow tan color. Proceed to go ahead and paint the entire pot with this base color. Reflective Shadows While the base color is still wet, Drop a mixture of blue and a bit of purple into your deepest shadows. Since this is a glass texture surface, the pot will reflect the colors that are around it. This is why it is so important to keep your color mixtures from earlier. I recommend adding a blue mixture to the far left of the pot, along the bottom, and along the bottom lip of the top section of your pot. Section number three, deepening shadows. Next, let the pot's base color and shadows dry a bit, not completely wet nor completely dry. This will give you smooth lines that mingle well with previous painted colors. With a toned, watered-down, purple-green hue, add once again shadows to your left side, bottom, and lower lip of your pot. The Shadow Myth Here's a myth that you have probably heard all of your life. Shadows are always gray and black. While there is a possibility that a shadow could be gray or black, Sometimes shadows cast different hues of more neutral colors. Keep this rule in mind when you are trying to add a bit of interest to your paintings. As a bit of fun color interest, I took my aqua paint mixture from earlier and painted that along the bottom portion of my pot where that shadow is being cast. I then took the purple magenta mixture that we had used earlier on our cactus. I took that and I painted that paint mixture on the left side of that casting shadow. What ended up happening is the two colors kind of merged together and bled into one another, creating this whole new color hue of brown. All right, now that that is done, let's go back to our warm colors. So go ahead and get your warm color paint plate. Next, we are going to be painting the flowers on our cactus. First, we are going to be painting the base colors of our flowers and buds. You will be doing this with the peach hue mixture from earlier. With this color, go ahead and water it down just a bit and then paint your flowers and your two buds. Once again, make sure to leave a little bit of white for your highlights on the far right side. Allow this to dry slightly to the point that it's not too wet but then it's also not extremely dry. 
it should have this glistening tone to it. Using the same color that we just used, drop paint into your shadows or where those cross hatching lines are located. Continue layering this color in your shadows until you reach that desired hue. Section number three, adding details. You'll also notice on some petals for the large open flower that I added striped colors coming from the center of the petal and going outward toward the edge. This is just an added extra element that I decided to add at the last minute. I used once again the same color as earlier. And finally, we are on the last step, finishing touches. The first section that we are going to cover is basically the dirt inside the pot. Using the same color from your label gray tan background, add a bit of this to your peachy mixture. It should turn into more of a warm brown color. Then paint this mixture as a base coat over your dirt. Section number two, we're going to be adding shadows to your dirt. Once again, you're going to use that base coat that we just created, but this time you're going to add a little bit of Payne's Gray to create a deeper grayish blue tone. Then I recommend painting this on your little rocks at the far left side and the bottom, as well as pretty much the whole left side of where your dirt is underneath your cactus. So basically think of that cactus casting a shadow in that direction. Once you are done with this, go ahead and let it dry. And I mean completely dry because you cannot do the next step without this painting being completely dry. With either your finger or a kneaded eraser or both, carefully remove all of the masking fluid or frisket from your painting. Once you've done this, it's time for those final, final details and then you are done. First, with the yellow-green mixture from earlier, basically that base coat that you used on your cactus at the very beginning, once again, take that color, add a little bit more yellow to it, and then go ahead and dab that color over those little white dots that we just uncovered with the masking fluid. The last final detail that you're going to be doing is actually taking a deep yellow and painting the center of your flower. And that is it. You're done with your painting and now it's time to let it dry and then remove the masking tape and display it for all to see. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. It is a difficult tutorial, but it's awesome for learning how to actually mix colors from a palette and create more of a harmonious look among all the colors of your painting. I would love to go into more detail on this, but you've heard me ramble far long enough. As usual, guys, it has been a pleasure and I will see you next time.
Go ahead and do that again. Um, and I wanna film you giving her some peanut butter and this will be a blooper at the end. Cause she's not giving me any good ones. She's totally pissed off right now. She's like, leave me alone. I don't wanna do this anymore. <laughs> Now you're all happy. Mm. All right, I got some good ones, so. You want another one, Daddy? You want another one? Oh yeah, I like the camera. Make it up, <laughs> make it up. Good girl. You want the rest of the peanut butter?